So here we're gonna talk about our Swan. Uh, it's got several different ports, this white one and the yellow one with the cap. These are actually gonna plug into your cardiac output cable to give you measurements. This blue chip here is for your SVO2. Um, these swans have an option to measure SVO2 or your mixed venous oxygenation, um, and you can calibrate it every 24 hours, so that'll give you a live reading. The red port is your balloon port. It's got a lock on it. That's locked and that's unlocked. Your blue is your CVP. This uh, white one is an infusion port here, so you can hook your uh, IV fluids or medications up to it. And then this yellow line is your PA catheter. This is the thermodilution coil. It's how it uses temperature uh, to measure your cardiac output. It's got a sensor here on the end, and then your balloon is right here. This is the syringe that comes with the swan. It will only draw back a milliliter and a half of air. That's the limit for this balloon. Um, so I always wanna make sure that your syringe locks and that it's not just a plain three milliliter syringe in your room. And I'm just gonna hook it up to the, the port just so you guys can see the balloon. So push it in. And there's your balloon. So when the physician is ready to insert the swan, um, if you're using a C-arm, uh, fluoroscopy will be here with it. Uh, but he'll be sterile and he's going to hand you the swan with the uh, sleeve already on it. He'll be handing you these ends. What he's going to do is uh, they're gonna have you flush the ports so we're gonna hook up our CVP to our pressure line. And again, this is all with a physician on the sterile field, just showing you guys. We're gonna hook it up. Again, the physician's sterilely holding this, but I'm just showing you. We're gonna flush it out. And there it is, flushing out CVP port. We're gonna hook up our PA to the PA port. Flushing this out, again, we're doing this before it goes into the patient, just so you guys can see it flushing out. There it goes. And then this white one is an infusion port, again. So actually, while we're hooking these up and flushing them out, we can put a clave on here. And flush this out as well. And you can see it running down the catheter. So now that we've got all these hooked up and primed, um, as the physician's inserting it, he'll tell you when to inflate the balloon and deflate the balloon. Just make sure that when they ask you to inflate or deflate, after you've inflated, say balloon up. After you've deflated, say balloon down. will be inserting the swan and again typically they will hand you the ends of the swan uh, to connect your CVP, your PA, your infusion port and to flush all those out before the swan's inserted. Um, and then typically, might depend on the physician as well, but typically the nurse will hold that non-sterile end and inflate and deflate the balloon. So basically, if you look at the picture, typically it starts in the right IJ, it'll go down the uh, SVC into the right atrium. And then again, if they're using fluoro, they might be taking pictures as they're doing it. You can and should watch the waveforms. So when you insert it, the balloon is deflated. It'll be going down into the right atrium, into the right ventricle. After you see the RV waveform, typically that's when you should, or you'll be told to inflate the balloon. Inflating the balloon helps the swan move with the direction of blood flow. So the reason that you don't want the balloon inflated when you're going down the SVC into the right atrium, into the RV, 
um, is that it'll just kind of float back up or float to the side. Um, so again, you're in the RV. Uh, typically, they'll tell you to inflate the balloon. Always give them confirmation that it is inflated before they proceed. Um, they'll continue to advance it, hopefully into the pulmonary artery. Once it's in the pulmonary artery where it needs to be, you'll get a wedge pressure and waveform. And again, if they're using fluoro, they'll uh, verify this with imaging. Um, and then always, again, make sure once they've got it in place, they've locked it, that that balloon is deflated. We do not want to keep that wedged and inflated. Uh, during the procedure, the RN, if they are inflating or deflating the balloon, should be watching the waveforms on the monitor and the patient's EKG, just because if you're going in there poking around the right ventricle, it can cause ectopy. Um, so it's a pretty simple procedure. It can be done without fluoro by just looking at the waveforms. So if this is emergent and the physician wants to do it at bedside, doesn't want to wait for fluoro, it can be done. 